Fintech is having a moment. This has been an amazing year for Fintech. Four key things to talk about, and then maybe one future facing prediction. The amount of capital that's gone into Fintech in this year, and we've only got nine months data, is way bigger than previous years. Year in year, we're gonna more than double the amount of capital. We're gonna have about 120 billion probably of FinTech venture capital investing this year. And as well as the size in total of the amount of money going into FinTech, the number of unicorns, FinTech unicorns that are emerging is simply unprecedented, literally unprecedented. Um, in a year alone, we're going to double the number of unicorns that we have globally. So this is like a real moment for fintech. And what's interesting as well in particular, and really stands out for me, is how this is now a global phenomenon. Five, six, seven years ago, when we were first looking at fintech, it really felt like a China and US phenomenon. What? some interesting activity in London or Tel Aviv, Stockholm, but it was very much two big poles, China and the big tech and the related fintech companies, and obviously the US. What's an amazing development in the last year or two, but particularly in 2021 is how this is now truly a global phenomenon. In fact, to some extent, the China story is really almost behind us now. And what we're seeing now is in Latin America, like you can see on these slides, in Africa, in the Middle East, where I'm based, you're seeing for the first time almost real significant investment dollars flowing in. Some of the numbers in Latin America off the charts, you know, 200%, 3x type increase in funding. Now, as well as money coming in to the space, which is partly driven by just the sheer low interest rate, large liquidity environment, there are also some very interesting product market fit developments happening. There's some real results happening in terms of business models. Now, one big trend for us is embedded finance or the platformification of finance. And if you think about it in layperson's terms, none of us wake up in the morning saying, we want to do financial services. No one wakes up in the morning and says, I want a loan. I need to make a payment. We want a loan because we plan to buy a house or we want to buy a car or we want to buy a particular asset or item. And the loan is a financing, it's a tool. It's a way for us to achieve some other goal. Financial services are all about that. It's a way for us to achieve another goal. And what embedded finance and platformification of finance in a way the kind of everything is becoming fintech that allows us to achieve that because we can do financial services, we can do payments, we can do different forms of credit without really thinking too much about it as a specific product. And particularly in Southeast Asia and in East Asia, platforms, platformification, that's where the zenith has been achieved. Moving away from traditional fintech, the other big theme for 2021 so far has been crypto or digital assets and sometimes called. The amount of numbers of cryptocurrencies, they're now in the tens of thousands, more than the number of banks there are in the US. The volume or value locked in to crypto or specific projects like in NFTs that again, these are new levels of kind of development. Um, so very early stages uh, when it comes to the DeFi world, the decentralized finance world, and a big development for us uh, when I think about looking back at 2021. But looking forward to 2022 and future years, we think one of the big trends is going to remain DeFi, but more than just DeFi in a crypto context. If we can zoom out and say decentralization is the trend, so both in the crypto world, but also in, if you can say the TradFi world, decentralization is for us the big trend looking ahead. Financial services, you know, starting with regulations, just PSD2 open banking, we began to open up financial services using old technologies like APIs, but new customer expectations, new regulations from open banking to open finance, and then maybe in the future, an open economy. And that openness, that 
we as individuals, we as citizens, we as customers at the center of the universe, that's what the future is going to be. And that's what both TradFi and TradFintech and so-called DeFi will allow us to achieve.